When you've got a great image that's ready to go up on a wall, a visit to your local framing shop is in order. We're here at Brooklyn Frameworks in Park Slope with George Winter, who's going to talk to us about mounting and framing a photograph. Could you talk a little bit about what really makes a successful framing job for a print that not only looks great, but that's going to last a long time? What are some of the keys? Well, in terms of the aesthetics, I'd say um, a clean contemporary look, uh, particularly with photographs, is, um, is important. Uh, you don't want to be overly gaudy. We like to um, encourage the use of all conservation materials, which is all acid-free boards and materials and tapes, and also the glass is important as well. What kinds of questions should customers be asking, or what kinds of things should they be prepared to even think about before they come to you? We usually start with the frame first uh, to give an idea of, of how how it uh, would how the client would like it to be framed. And uh, once we kind of establish that and we talk about if matting is even the desired effect, because in the case of this one here, we, could, we don't necessarily have to mat it. For instance, you could take a frame and um, you know, just have it like right to the edge here. Oh. And that, that could work. Now with this one, I was thinking maybe we'd go with a, like you were saying before, a real simple classic modern look, maybe the traditional sort of black frame around mm -hmm. there. And if this print is, say, an 8 by 10 size with a little bit of a border around it, what kind of what size frame would you think about for something like that? What, what would you recommend? Well, we have many different options. We could do a custom frame to any size and any proportion. We also do have some ready-made frames where we could uh, fit that, say, into a 16 by 20. Let's go in the back and see how this all gets put together. All right, so George, you got an order coming in for Matt. What's the first step? Well, we pull the map board, uh, make sure we have it in stock, and then um, we enter the specs into the computer and um, just hit go. Once the cut dimensions are entered into the computer, the automated mat cutter makes quick work of any window mats. It's fast, precise, and best of all, never takes a lunch break. The next step is to make what's called a book mat. This will protect the print, keep it flat, and ensures proper spacing between the artwork and the frame as well as the glass. Simple, non-permanent methods of hinging are preferred by conservation-minded framers. This way, the print can easily be inspected and, if necessary, removed at a later date. The edges of the book mat are hinged with a strip of acid-free tape. When image longevity is a concern, it's crucial that any materials coming into contact with either the print or the mat be free of acids and other outgassing contaminants that will eventually migrate to the artwork, causing discoloration and decay. Now it's time to position the print on the backing board. George is using acid-free tape to create a T-hinge on the back of the print. A bone folder is used to burnish the tape for a good seal. Once the print is perfectly centered within the mat opening, a weight is used to keep it from shifting while George finishes the T-hinge with small strips of tape placed horizontally across the vertical strips. After burnishing both edges of the hinge, the print is now fully matted. Matting a print is great for long-term storage in flat files. Matted prints are also work well for portfolios because they allow people to hold the art and examine it closely without touching and damaging the print. The next step is really to um, get the glass together. And okay. uh, we like to use conservation glass for just about everything. It's a nominal cost more than regular glass. Okay. And the glare properties are the same as regular glass. It just blocks out 98% of the UV rays. Okay, and the UV yeah. is what you really want to watch out for for, yes. for fading your prints. It's the biggest enemy of, of paper. Here, we're using UV blocking conservation glass, but plexiglass is a popular alternative when framed prints have to be shipped due to its shatter resistance. It's important to work in a dust-free area when framing a print, and care must be taken to avoid fingerprints. At Brooklyn Frameworks, a combination of cleaning solution, brushes, and compressed air keep dust from settling on your print. We chose a simple black frame to go with this photograph to provide a clean and modern look that doesn't draw attention away from the image. It's the classic style for black and white photography. An air gun is used to drive flexible framing points into the back of the frame and hold the contents into place. The edges of the frame are then sealed with acid-free tape. The mark of any professional framing job is the installation of a dust cover. This will serve as a final barrier protecting the print it's held in place with double-sided adhesive known in the industry as ATG. Once the dust cover is laid over the frame, 
George creases along the edges to make the cutting easier. A few passes with an X-Acto blade, and then it's time to install the wiring to hang the print. The trick is to place the hooks about a third of the way down from the top edge of the frame. This allows the frame to hang straight against the wall without bowing. A few twists of the wire, and then... Our stand for our store. Oh, there you go. You've got to have that. Brooklyn Frameworks. Yep. Made in Brooklyn. That. And here we've got our print all ready to hang up on the wall, courtesy of Brooklyn Frameworks in Park Slope. Up next, we'll explore Photoshop in our master class. I'm here with Rewa, and today we're going to help her make better images by using the techniques that allow us to work on specific areas of the image. So Rewa, here in this first picture, tell us a little bit what you like about it and what you'd like to change. Well, you see here in this picture, the background is really kind of bright. And um, I want to darken it just a little, but every time I do that, his face gets too dark, and that's not what I really want. Okay, so what we really need to do here is to be able to change the background and his face in two different ways. So the great thing you did when you shot this was that you shot it in raw mode. So we can actually go back to the original raw file, and we'll open that up, and what we're going to end up doing is making two versions of this image. So we're going to open this image up in camera raw, and we can see here, we've got a nice background but the face is too dark. What we're actually going to do is save a version of the image where the background looks great but the face is a little bit too dark. So we're okay. going to click on save image and we're going to select a folder. I think we'll just set it on the desktop for right now and this will give us a nice image to work on that's just got the background where we want it. Now with this image still open in camera raw, the great thing is that we can now move the exposure and we can make a second version of this image so that his face is where we want it. And even though the background, as you can see, is getting very light, we're not right. going to worry about that because we're actually going to piece this image together and take just the parts out of each version that we like. Okay. So if we set an exposure right about here, that looks pretty good for his face. So now we're going to hit the Save Image button again and do exactly the same thing. We'll move it to the same place we had it before while that's saving will now go into Photoshop and open up these two images and then see how we can combine these together. And now what we're going to do is take this darker image and move it right on top of the lighter image. And I'm holding down the shift key and what this is going to do is make a, a separate layer and they're going to be in perfect registration. So now we can focus on this image. Again, it looks like the original shot where the background looks great but his face is too dark. But we're going to click on this top layer, and what we're going to do is add a layer mask. So we click on the Add Layer Mask button, and we have, as you see, a white layer mask attached to the image. Now, the great thing about this with layer masks is that wherever the mask is white, that top image is going to show through, and wherever it's black, the bottom image is going to show through. So what we want to have is actually a gradation where you see this top image that's darker, but then as it gets down to his hair and towards its face, we want that lighter bottom image to show through. So we're going to go and select the gradient tool, click on our layer, make sure it's active, hold down the shift key and drag a straight line through the photograph. And so look what happens. All of a sudden, we've let the background come in, also lightened up his face. So now what we've really got is a nice balance wow. between the two images. It's very nice. I can see that. His face is the exact color that I want him right now. It's not too dark. And Shadows on there. And very we've nice. still got a nice background. So that, that's a way that's really simple and fast and easy to combine multiple exposures to get a really perfect image. Beautiful.